For quite some time, I've had the idea of building a cyber deck, and this might just be the jankiest one you've ever seen. For those unfamiliar, a cyber deck is basically an alternative style of computer. Some of them have a clamshell design similar to a laptop, while other designs are unique in their own right, such as having the computer built into the keyboard, which was common for old computers like the Commodore 64. It's kind of hard to explain exactly what a cyber deck is, but you'll know it when you see it. But this build is a bit unusual for two main reasons. The first is resource limitations. At the moment, I don't have any fancy equipment like a 3D printer or CNC machine. While I plan on buying them in the future because I want to make more projects like this, at the moment I'm limited to using hand and power tools, and while I didn't have a strict budget, ideally I wanted to reuse as much as I could. For example, I didn't have a barrel jack to USB cable, but instead of going out and buying one, I just made my own by soldering two other cables together. Now, I already owned most of the tools, except for a Dremel and a heat gun which I bought from my local DIY store. The screen was ripped from an old netbook, but to use it with this build I had to buy a driver board on eBay. I also ripped out the speakers, although I haven't wired them up yet and to power everything, I'm just using an old USB power bank. The second is the board in question. A lot of cyber decks are based on Raspberry Pis, and honestly, this is for good reason. Although the Raspberry Pi isn't the fastest SBC on the market, it has good documentation, the software just works, and it has strong community support, so it's not hard to find accessories made for the Pi. But for this build, I'm using a fairly niche board the KickPi K2B. No particular reason other than I got it for free. I initially wanted to use a RISC-V SBC just for the novelty of it, and while I do have other plans in mind for this board, after some testing I concluded that it wasn't going to be a good option for this project. Another option could have been to use the netbook's original motherboard. This would have some advantages in terms of compatibility, but it wouldn't be very interesting as it would just be the same computer in a different shell. As you can see, I decided to build this cyber deck inside of a toolbox because that's the closest thing I could think of that had a laptop-like clamshell. I initially bought a slightly smaller toolbox, and I would have preferred to use that one because the screen wouldn't have as big of a bezel. But unfortunately, I couldn't find a wired keyboard that was small enough to fit. I initially bought this Bluetooth keyboard thinking it could work, but the USB-C interface is only for charging the battery, it can't relay data, and I didn't want to faff around with Bluetooth, I wanted a keyboard that just works. So I decided to get a slightly bigger box, and the smallest wired keyboard I could find. And I think I made the right choice because even if I opted for Bluetooth, these keyboards look very uncomfortable to type on. Despite checking the dimensions before buying, this new keyboard was still too big, so I cut out a big chunk of the toolbox using a Dremel. You'll also notice that there's no trackpad, but this isn't a big deal since I'm using a tiling window manager. That said, I do have a wireless mouse plugged into the board just in case I need it. So if I have a working cyber deck, why am I saying it's rubbish? Well the main problem is the SBC. Now it's not a bad board in and of itself, but it does depend on the use case. A few weeks ago I went on holiday to Cornwall, and I had this board at home running Jellyfin, Pihole, OpenVPN, and Nextcloud inside of Casa OS, and it did a really good job. The problem is the software side. If you want more information, check out my last video, but to summarise, the official Ubuntu image lacks proper hardware accelerated graphics which is fine for servers, but kind of annoying for desktop use. And while I didn't design this cyber deck to play games, it would be cool to play some lighter titles. I'm currently using an Ambient image for the Orange Pi Zero 3 because this board can boot it. But the problem is, this isn't an Orange Pi Zero 3. So while we have Panfrost and accelerated graphics running, it comes at the cost of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and sound not working. The second problem is the battery. Since I'm just using a power bank plugged into the USB-C port, 
The computer doesn't know it's running from a battery, so the OS can't tell us how much battery we have left, and this is a problem because when the battery is low, there's no warning or indication that it's low, and when the battery runs out, it just shuts off. Initially, I wanted to place the power bank underneath the keyboard, because even if the system doesn't detect it as a battery, at least I can know how much battery is left. But the only place I could fit the battery was behind the screen, and the screen is blocking the power bank's monitor. And the final problem is this device is too top heavy. Underneath the keyboard, you'll see I have this battery which I took from the netbook, but it's not plugged into anything, it's just acting as a counterweight, and if I remove it, the device tips over. Again, this is quite an easy fix. All I have to do is fix the battery in place so it doesn't slide around, or find something else that has a bit of weight. And I might cover it up using excess plastic I have so I can make a palm rest. There are some other things I've yet to do, like adding a USB hub and wiring up the speakers. But again, these are fairly simple things to do. Although this Cyberdeck didn't come out how I planned, I'm still quite happy with the result, and I'm glad I actually made something. I think with a lot of projects, people overplan and are so concerned with making something perfect that they never start. So I decided not to overthink and just make something. And to be honest, I quite like the form factor. The handle of the toolbox combined with the weight of the device makes it feel surprisingly premium. While I mostly made this Cyberdeck for fun, I do have some actual use cases in mind. In the future, I want to make something similar to this, but with an e-ink display, almost like a digital typewriter, where you can write a document in LaTeX or Markdown, convert it to a PDF, have a cup server running locally, and then print it off. Of course, you can do that with this device, but I think it would be a lot cooler with an e-ink display. That's it for today's video, and until next time, cheerio.